I can't do it with choice, so. Hello, all you beautiful people out there. You know I wasn't born with magic. I got it from this grimoire, this book of magic. It's, it's not magic at all. It's just me holding a book. Kind of look cool, though, didn't it? Nope. Not at all. All right. Well, this is what we're going to learn today. We're going to create a grimoire. This can be used for witches, for wizards, if you want to throw waffle bolts at people, whatever you need to do, and you need a magic book, this is a quick build. That'll be great for you. This doesn't have to be the exact design you use. Uh, I just kind of figured out the best parts that I liked in a couple different reference images and made this. It's lightweight if you cut out all the center of the pages as we did with other builds and it's easy to carry around and looks looks great it's a great accessory and prop for any of your magic type cosplays Ooh, let's try that magic again oh it's floating oh it's getting closer to you let's start the build Ooh. all right in this video we're going to make a necronomicon no, we're not. We already made that in this video right here. But well, we're going to make a grimoire. Uh, grimoire is basically a book of spells, which the Necronomicon is, which, by the way, is right here. Necronomicon is the Book of the Dead. So you can see how to make that in our other video. But we're going to make one specifically for a witch. This is my inspiration. So we're going to kind of follow that path. It's got these little corner things that should be easy to make in the corners, the centerpiece, and we've got a book. Now I could go through and cut all these pages out and hollow them out like this, which I did for the Necronomicon build. But since we're, I'm not going to carry this around, and if I do in the future or if I give it away, I will go ahead and do that to reduce the weight because the two pound difference in a book makes all the difference when you're carrying something around for four to eight hours. So I just picked this book up at the Goodwill for a dollar. It's hardcover, which is what you want. It's thick, it's sturdy, and that's what we're looking for. I took Fruit Loops box, or generic version of Fruit Loops, Fruit Rings, because uh, I have a five-year-old and I'm too cheap to buy the good stuff. She don't need it anyway. And I'm using that to help with templates. And I made two templates. One is the center circle. That will go here. And then I made the edge shape. Like this. Which will be reproduced four times for the edges. Now I've gone ahead and cut out on some 3 millimeter foam. Uh, not necessarily have to be that. You can use whatever foam you want. I trace this. I cut it out. This will be the base for the circle in the center. I then went further with my template and cut out the center so I have this ring. And I went through and cut that out. And then I took that and I glued the ring around here to give it some depth so it's not just flat and since it has kind of the witch thing I don't know what this is called that shape I just took a exacto knife and I carved into that hit it with my heat gun it opened it up and separated it real good so the centerpiece is already created it's not perfect it's a little off center but it'll work for demonstration purposes next we're going to create four of these you can use the corners, it'll save you some cutting time if you use the corners. Find an ink pen, make sure it works, and trace. I like using cardboard for a template I'm going to recreate more than one time because it's much more sturdy and it holds its shape better. You don't have to worry about it moving around as much. And since you're going to have four pieces, you want them to look as close as uh, identical as possible.
as I'm progressing through and cleaning these up, I'm finding that these little holes here are very difficult to clean out. So I'm actually just going to change my plan and find something to put over them. Maybe a diamond shape that I'll put over top, add an extra layer, or um, some googly eyes, which are great. They'll give it a round effect, almost make it look like it's bolted on. I might go with that route. So these are cleaned up enough for government work, is what they say, because that's what they say. And I've gone through and I've taken my templates and I've marked out on my book where I want things to go. It's an important step. You don't want to just start throwing things on there without a little advanced planning. So now that we know that, we're going to use super glue. We could use hot glue, we could use barge, we could use about anything. But for the sake of this one, we're just going to use super glue. You want to make sure you get the edges real well. You don't want it to come up during use. Now remember, unless you're using accelerant, this does not dry instantly. It's a chemical drying process for super glue, not air. So you can't blow on it, you can't speed up the process. Just put it on there, don't disturb it, and let it do its thing. Right, after I added the little googly eyes along here to cover up those holes, I decided I kind of like the bolt look. So I added some more there, and they're all googly. Woo! But you won't see that once it's painted. So we're going to actually just stop here. I was thinking about adding a clasp, um, which you could do with a uh, piece of Velcro here to have it wrap around and stick. You could do whatever you want. Uh, but for this purpose, uh, we're going to make this semi-generic, and you can do it however you like. But of course, this is the point where you want to add any more details. Anything you want before you start covering it and preparing it for paint, you need to do now. So go ahead and get everything done, give it time to dry, and we're going to cover it. We have two options to cover it. We can use Plasti Dip, which went in this classic muscle car green. They were on sale, so I got, got it for like six bucks a pop. And since it's kind of expensive, we're going to hold off on this, save it for something more, um, more technical that we want to use that one. Your other option is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is pretty simple. We're just going to brush it on in a couple layers, both sides, and then we'll be able to paint it. Uh, in this video over here, somewhere right here, you can see how we make Mod Podge for about 10% of the cost of actually buying it in the store. So go ahead and check that video out when you're done with this, and or just Google it on my channel, you'll see it, and it'll show you how to make Mod Podge real cheap. You can also use a sponge, you can use whatever you need. But this is all dry enough now, now we're going to go ahead and do it. If you wanted, you could take some tape, like a masking tape, and cover the edges of your pages. That'll keep it from getting all gummed up from the Mod Podge. But we're not going to go that far today, because uh, I don't really care if the book opens. So we're just going to use it as is using our homemade Mod Podge, which will also demonstrate how it works just like the other. And we're just going to put it on there. Alright, I have something to admit to you. I'm a fibber. Why am I a fibber? Because I don't have a lot of time to do three layers of Mod Podge on here. Due to time constraints, I just decided to go ahead and use the Plasti Dip. And I wanted to give you a little tip about Plasti Dip. First thing about Plasti Dip is you have to make sure you shake it good. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to shake it really, really well. And the second thing is Plasti, Plasti Dip does not work well when it's cold. In colder weather, things like that, it's not going to give you the same kind of result. So what I like to do is get a small thing of warm water and just let it sit in there for a few minutes kind of warm it up because what that does it takes the molecules inside the plastic it shrinks them up makes them move faster and then it comes I don't know what happens I just made that whole thing up but what it does it, is it actually does make it come out a little thinner and it sprays a little better now I am right at the edge of my garage I wouldn't do it any closer to my house than this the smells will still get into my house from here but uh, you know 
Everybody's gone, it's just me. And you know what they say, when the wife's away, you can cosplay. Do they say that? I don't think they say that. I say that. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and add two good layers on here. All I've done is propped it up. Got some little foam stands to keep the things up. Got some wood on this side just to kind of give us some support. And I'm ready to go. Oh, I also put wax paper over the pages. I just wrapped the entirety of the pages together to uh, protect them. Now, yes, this is green. You could go with a black, which would probably be better if you're going with a black book. But for the sake of cost efficiency, I went ahead and got what was on sale, which was the muscle car colors, and the green was the coolest. So I got that. First layer should go on semi-thick. You don't want it so thick that it starts to pool or drift. But you want it to look wet. You want to make sure you come from it from different angles too. Because there's crevices up that way, that way, over here and there, and you want to get in all the crevices. So hit it from multiple angles. And I think that'll do it for the first layer. We'll give that time to dry and uh, we'll come back. But before you leave this sit, this nozzle will clog up quick. Best thing to do is take it, hold it upside down, let some of the propellant out, and that propellant is coming out clear now. It got most of the plastic dip out, so it shouldn't clog now. If it does, it'll clog a whole lot less. So that's another tip about using plastic dip. All right, I have a layer on already, and as I use this chip brush, it starts to, well, I guess it's just a little too aggressive. It starts to peel back the bottom layer. So you get something like that, just switch to a smaller, better detail brush, or you can be lighter. It's not a big deal if you run into a problem like that. Just uh, adapt and change with it. Don't be afraid to also switch your book around to a different angle while you're painting, because you'll discover, like, Right in here, I didn't get the paint in there very well. I wouldn't notice that if I didn't switch angles. You know, for some reason, speaking of angles, I've always had an issue remembering the correct spelling of angles versus angels. Uh, I don't know how many times I've went to write something about an angle, and it's like, oh, is that E-L or L-E? And I don't know why I'm telling you this, except to illustrate that uh, I'm a dummy today. So, uh, don't be afraid to switch your book to different angels. And look, to make sure you're not missing something. Well, I'm not quite sure what happened here. I had some uh, files showing me painting, and they uh, were corrupt, or I did it wrong, or something. I don't know. Anyway, what happened was, we missed my paint job. Didn't really miss much, it's the ordinary type of paint job. Once all the Plasti Dip was dried, uh, I went over it with the black wash, which I believe we still have the file footage of. And once, no, I'm sorry, not a black wash, just a flat black base coat. And once that base coat was done, I went back over and did some detail work. Not too much, just a little bit, because this is just for example purposes. Uh, I didn't want to get too in depth with it, it would just take that much longer to make the video and to explain everything. So what I did for the gold was I used some gold. Let me get it out. Where'd it go? Where'd you go? There it is. Some gold rub and buff. Rub and buff comes in many colors. I have gold and I have silver. And what it is is it's a it's not really a, a paint, it's not an acrylic or anything like that. It actually says it is a wax metallic finish. So you would put a little bit out of this, a little tiny bit of this on something. Use your finger and rub it in. You don't need a whole lot, a little goes a long way. We'll use this in other videos and you can really see it in action. But just to give you an idea of what I did is I used the gold on all the edges that I wanted. Well, not the edges, but the different uh, three-dimensional pieces rubbed it in with my finger until it was good and solid 
and it gives it a very good gold type look. I mean, it doesn't look like real gold, but it looks pretty metallic, and I like that look. And for all the googly eyes, I could have used silver rub and buff, but instead, since it's such a small area, I just took one of my paint pens that you can pick up anywhere, and it's a silver color, and I just boop, 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 dabbed it. And I did that on all of these things here. And for experimental purposes, I tried to take the gold leaf, I think it's gold leaf, gold, antique gold, rub and buff and see if I could do the gold edge is like you see on some of the um, more expensive books it didn't work out so great as you could see so this is something that I wouldn't recommend trying I did it for experimental purposes because you know this is what we're doing here we're learning we're experimenting we're listening to cars go by in the distance because it's loud out there but this is a test an experiment I did you won't have to do so you won't have to ruin your book and I won't say it's ruined. I can go over with black because, you know, if it's a grimoire, why not make black pages? So I can go over the whole thing with black or I can really age it well by burning the edges, um, doing a, a light black, um, real, real light paint job, weathering, if you will. Speaking of weathering, that's the next step in this book now that you've seen this. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention was I did purple here. Oh, and this kind of effect here. I wanted to break up the flat black and the only thing I could really think of doing was taking a little bit of purple and I put a little tiny bit on a, a one inch chip brush and I knocked most of it off kinda of like when you're dry brushing and I just added a little bit and I really worked it out and spread it around a lot to just kinda of give it this misty foggy kind of purple tint to break up the black the black so now we're going to move on to weathering this weathering also known as antiquing is basically something we've discussed many times in many videos but just for uh, the newbies in case this is the first time you are here we are going to use watered down black acrylic this is already pre-watered down I've marked it and it's just got a little bit of black and um, I'd say about 60% water, maybe even 75% water and 25% acrylic paint. I don't think there's really an exact measurement for it. That's just how I make it. Got me a paintbrush. Got some paper towels. We're just going to add a little bit of black. A little goes a long way. You don't want to waste all of your materials. So I'd prefer, personally, to use less and add if I need to, because you can always add more. It's hard to put it back in the bottle. So we're going to take our thin black, and we're going to get it down in these crevices, especially down here. So I want that crevice to really be darkened. There we go zoom in a little bit for you there you go now this symbol that's associated with witches I don't know what the symbol is called or what it exactly means it stands out a whole lot better now around these uh, divots not divots I don't know what you would call them protrusions we're going to add some around there Same thing, I'm going to wipe away. I'm trying to leave just a little bit behind. Now you can see that one compared to that one. It looks older, more worn. I don't want a lot, I just want to make it look like this has been used. And there's some buildup of grime left behind over time. That was like a three-part rhyme there, I think. Grime over time. That's just fine.
Now it's kind of making it look like it's a little older compared to these fresh ones up here. I'm going to continue the process on these and I'm also going to get down in this circle. Down in this circle. There you have it. The clear coat is applied. It protects our finish. It's been weathered. And this is a good demonstration how you can make something with a $1 book from the Goodwill and a couple $1 sheets of foam from the craft store such as Hobby Lobby or Amazon.com and a couple googly eyes and some paint. Now you can make any kind of design you want. This is just a good demonstration on how simple it is. It's not a difficult process so anytime you need to make a grimoire or something like that for a cosplay just use your imagination. You can come up with just about anything you want and make some fun stuff with something as simple as a book. Hey, thanks for watching, but before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.